All right, guys, we are gonna talk about the differences between anodizing and coatings. Now, this is gonna be, a because I've had a bunch of people ask me, you know, how come when I've got anodizing, it washes out, because you can see that there's fingerprints on this, and what the coatings that I use are, because DLC has a tendency to do what anodizing does. Hang so, on just a second, and I will explain the difference between the coatings that I use and DLC. So hang on just a minute. So guys, this is not going to be a really in-depth kind of scientific thing. I'm just gonna kind of explain some of the minor differences between this. And we're inside because it's weird windy outside and it's just blowing and the canopy is is blowing and the, the light keeps shifting back and forth and back and forth and it was just bothering me. And so since I'm not really sharpening anything, I have one knife left to do and I haven't heard anything from the customer exactly what he wants because once again, Notes, ladies and gentlemen, a note in your package will keep your knife from being delayed. If I know exactly what you want, it takes a lot less time. So, there are some definite differences, extreme differences between this and this. So, I've had people ask me, oh, how did you get your titanium black like that? What's the, how do you blacken it? It's a coating. It's an electrically applied coating, which is drastically different than anodizing. So, yes, they are both electrically induced. However, this is created by forcing oxygen to, ad to adhere and forcing titanium to absorb an oxygen molecule and causing an, a, a forced chemical reaction. Um, as we all know, oxygen and oxygen and other items, they bond together and they form new compounds. In this case, titanium oxidizes and it forms a crystalline structure that at different thicknesses reflects and refracts different colors. So the actual oxide layer that forms on the outside of titanium doesn't truly have a color. What it is, is <clears throat> that the titanium dioxide layer that forms the titanium oxide on the exterior of the titanium that you form by forcing electricity through it in a, in a, uh, in an electrolyte bath that you're forcing oxygen in an oxygen rich environment, forcing it to absorb oxygen causes crystals to form on the exterior of the titanium. And it reflects back certain colors of the wavelength differently. So at different voltages, it's a different thickness. You get a different wavelength of light. Bronze happens to be uh, in the 14, the 13 to 15 to 17, depends on your amperage and things like that and how you prepare your surface. That is anodizing in a very small nutshell. It, a lot of it has to do, a polished surface will give you a much different color spectrum than a blasted surface, than a tumbled surface, than depending on how you prep it. If you don't etch it properly or you etch it longer, you'll get different, but that, that's neither here nor there. But that, ex that tells you, like I've had people say, oh, I, I had a guy that, that sent me a knife and he's like, okay, I had somebody anodize it and the second I touched it, it just washed out. Well, that makes sense because it's, it's not a coating. Those crystals, when you get oil on it and you smear it over, as you can see, there you go. See how I just did that and now it looks purplish, bronzish. The bronze will get a purplish tint. This is kind of a higher voltage. Uh, it changes. You, what you're doing is you're filling in those little, they're little prisms. And they're all stacked up against each other. And so you have a little, you have all these little prisms. And what happens is that oil fills it in and now it doesn't reflect it the way it did. So it's going to change it. 
So when you're, if I was to take this and wipe it off with some rubbing alcohol or wipe it off with Windex, Windex, oh my goodness, anodizing loves Windex. Clean it off, it's like, it's like brand new all over again. Anodizing, that's anodizing and that's why it looks like that because it's a, it's a very, very super, super thin layer. Now, this is an actual coating. I have taken a negative lead and put on one side and a positive lead on the other in a bath that's full of a ceramic coating and the negative, negatively charged side, the positively charged side forces it into here. You rinse off the excess and you bake it on. So, and that's, I did anodize this. I made a new, I didn't make it. I just put a new, and I did the blade. And, and what you've done is now you've put a coating, a layer of ceramic on, you bake it on, and you have a coating that does not reflect. It is just basically whatever dye happens to be in that ceramic that absorbs all the colors except the one it reflects back. This just happens to absorb all of them, so you get nothing back, and you get it's black, it's neutral. So... The coating that we use is a nano ceramic coating. It's the same coating that the, the guys at the Ferrum Forge, because that's where I do it, is at their shop. They are kind enough to let me use their equipment. So when you do this coating, it is it's a it's a thinner coating than Cerakote. So what you get is you get a much more even coating because you're not spraying it on. And and this is the difference between this is now we're gonna get into this the difference between this and Cerakote. So what you'll get is a much more even, um, clean coat of your, uh, of your coating material than you will with a Cerakote. Because Cerakote has to come out of a spray gun, even if you're using, I've seen people use a, uh, what do you call it, an airbrush, and they're getting a really thin, but you still, it's, it's splotchy and it looks mottled. Uh, no matter how hard you try, it doesn't look as clean and clear as this. And so the smoother your surface is, the finer and and smoother. Let's see if I can get a good. Well, hang on a second. Let me stop this. Let me pause it. I'm clean off an area here and I'll turn this around and I'll get a better view of it for you. Hang on just a second. Clean eraser stuff where my daughter did her homework. So as you can see here. This was a much more polished surface because this is a knife Elliot made and he did a rock pattern on the spine. And you can see that there are certain areas where you get a much more polished surface. The milled patterns here. Now, the thing is with this, usually we blast these areas that have, um, that where you're gonna apply the uh, ceramic coating because it adheres better, but then it fills that in. So it, it feels really smooth because it fills in all those blasted areas. So you get a very smooth finish on that. But then there are areas that I masked off where you can see it's still really smooth, like right up in here on that and right there. So this ceramic coating wears really well because it adheres really well and it's ceramic and you bake it on and it cures on just like uh just like a coating that you would put on top of a ceramic plate or bowl like you have at your house and so it fills in all those little grooves and everything and it comes out really smooth and it wears really well so um now the difference between this and dlc so let me turn you back around and we'll explain that once again. Oh, dropped you. Hang on. So now I have read about DLC. DLC is an incredibly hard coating. It really is. But the thing about DLC is it's it's limited in colors. Uh, and I think they're usually black or gray. But the thing is, DLC's opa uh, the, the, how opaque it is is really, really limited. Now you can see, you can still see on this grind lines and things like that, but not as clearly on this ceramic coating as you see in, uh, 
in DLC and DLC is very thin coat and you actually will get with DLC and I've seen it because Elliot has got a knife that was bought for him as a gift um, where your finger oils will actually discolor the DLC until you wipe it off because it's super, super thin and that's because DLC coating, the diamond-like, uh, it's, it's diamond-like carbon coating is applied, from what I understand, it's applied in a vacuum as a vapor coating that's done in a vacuum chamber that just coats super, super thin coating on top of the steel. Now, from what I understand, the only way to scratch that coating is to hit it with something that's hard enough to scratch the steel. Now, the best coating I've ever seen on any knife that was DLC, I have to admit, is freaking gorgeous, was done on Shun Nai, or not Shun, I'm sorry, the, uh, the uh, Rocksteads, Rockstead knives. And it is gorgeous, I have to admit. But I, a lot of it has to do with how those knives are prepared for the DLC coating before it's applied. So, there's two things at play there. There is the prep that's done before that knife is ever coated with DLC. And then there is the actual the DLC process that they use. So I don't know if there's a way to get DLC. I'm not really well versed in DLC. It's not something I can do. It's a very, very expensive process to get done. Everybody has to ship it out. You know, you have to have a vacuum chamber to do it in. You have to have the equipment to do it, the vapor and all this. And there's another coating that's called PVD. And PVD doesn't, PVD is a process, not an actual, it's a process to coat things, not an actual coating itself. So PVD is a process by which things are coated, not an actual coating itself. PVD coating, and I can't remember what it stands for. But at any rate, so there is just the differences. So, so like I just kind of wanted to, to, to kind of go over the differences between it because sometimes it's confusing for people because people think that anodizing is a coating because with aluminum anodizing, it kind of is different. So that's that's another that's a whole nother step. So aluminum anodizing is a lot different than than titanium anodizing, and that's that's we'll talk about that now. So when you anodize aluminum, you have to have caustic chemicals and and and, and acids and things like that. So what you do is you build up this layer of aluminum oxide on the surface of the aluminum with with an acid, and then you have to open that up and, and prep it, and then you can dye it with basically uh, um, the same dye that you would use for coloring clothing. And you can do a hard coat, and some of the best aluminum anodizing I've ever seen has been done by Microtech. I have a Microtech DOC that I have carried the crap out of, and the anodizing has held up incredibly well. Like, I've carried it to the point where it had skateboard tape inside the pockets. I wore that completely out. I have worn it to the point where it has shiny spots on flipper tabs and parts of the steel, and the, the anodizing has held up. So you can do aluminum anodizing really, really well and have it hold up, but it's a completely different process than doing titanium. I can't do it. Um, mainly because the chemicals that you have to have for it are really dangerous. I, I choose not to even try to do it. Um, I will only anodize uh, uh, or titanium, I mean. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. I just, I, that's some different content. I've said I was going to do it for a while. Uh, I promised I would do it. So there we go. Now, I have another video that I'm going to shoot right after this. I'm going to edit this video. I'm going to throw it together. I'm going to put it on my old phone and upload it and see if that process goes faster. If it does, then I know it's no longer, I was talking about it on my live feed this morning. I'm not 100% sure if my upload speed problem is this phone or if it is my internet. So I'm going to do a test and if this video loads to YouTube faster on my old phone, then I know I have a problem with my phone. So we're gonna, we're gonna do a little testing. I might do, uh, I might do YouTube uploads from my old iPhone 5 as opposed to this phone. Um, this phone's acting funny, so I may have to upgrade my phone. Uh, I'm due for an upgrade anyway, and my, my daughter wind up, might wind up inheriting this phone. She's at the age where she kind of needs a phone. She really does. I hate to admit it. It makes me feel old. So, all right, guys. 
Appreciate everything. Like I said in the live feed, I currently have nothing on the workbench. I have a couple knives coming here and there. I do know it's Blade Show. Um, it's the month of Blade Show. But if you have anything that you've been holding off saying, ah, oh, he's busy, you know, I don't want it to sit forever. I my my table is completely empty. Do not feel like you do not you're like, oh, I don't want it to sit. I could get have it done and back out the door quickly. Uh, this is my business. This is my income. This is my primary. This is what keeps the roof over our head. So don't feel as though you're, you're, you're like, you're over overwhelming me if you're trying to send me anything. So, all right, guys, I am going to get shirts packed up. The wife is going to help me get some stuff packed up. They are going to come out. I can't ship them all at once. I'm going to ship them. I'm going to ship them a few at a time. I'm sorry. I have to do it that way. I can't afford, I cannot afford to send them all at once. So I'm going to ship probably five at a time. Uh, there's not that many of you that ordered them probably be a few weeks. You guys will get your shirts. I apologize I just cannot afford to ship them all at once I, even though I know you guys pay, paid for shipping I just can't take that financial hit all at once. I have to pay for other things, too All right guys you guys take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video. This is a long one I apologize, but it's something I wanted to do. All right take it easy